Hello. Hello and welcome to Friday Night Live. I'm just going to wait for some people to show up. It appears to be working. Sam, if you're out there, give me a shout. Let me know that this is, uh, this is happening. Hi, everybody. My name is Carter Eastler. I am the Director of Education at CBD Dog Health. And today, we are going to be talking about hot spots on dogs and cats. Um, so thank you so much for coming. Let us know where you're from. I will also be taking questions. If you have any questions about CBD or cannabis medicine for your pet, other holistic modalities, I'll do my best. I'm my, my area of expertise is definitely with CBD and with cannabis therapies. But if there are other uh, questions that you have, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, so post your questions here in the comments section below. And then also um, another really exciting thing that we're gonna be doing today is we are doing a giveaway. We are going to be giving away some of our CBD Dog Health's Soothe Salve, which is a really phenomenal topical CBD salve uh, that is really great for hot spots, which is our topic today. So, hi, I see some people showing up. Let us know where you're from. Comment below to tell us where you're coming in from. Again, my name is Carter. I'm here and excited to talk to you all today. We've got, uh, we've got a lot to talk about, and I hope to be able to help some of you out directly, answer some of your questions, and have a little fun in the process. I'm coming at you live from San Diego, California, where, uh, where I've been based for quite a while. Most of our team is in Florida, outside of Tampa, um, where our rescue farm, Fireflake Farm, is, and our founder, Angela Artelino, lives. Uh, we also have grooming shops there, uh, all holistic products grooming and boarding businesses around that area where we practice what we preach. You know, we, we talk a lot about CBD and hemp medicine and cannabis, um, but we also recognize that this, we, you know, there are so many different elements that go into our dog's health. And if you just leave one lacking, if you're only targeting it by one way, you're not gonna be nearly as effective as if you approach your pet's health with a holistic mindset. Hi, Susan. Hello, Itai from Key West. Welcome. Where's everybody else from? Comment below. And if you have questions, please post them in there and I will get to them. Uh, also, again, for everybody who's just showing up, we are doing a giveaway today. So stick around. We're going to be giving away some Soothe Salve today. This is a really amazing topical CBD salve that has got Manuka honey, CBD from a full spectrum hemp extract, ginger, arnica. Uh, it's in a coconut oil base. So the reason that we're giving this away is because it's really awesome for hot spots, which is uh, what our topic is today. Oh, we've got some Terry from Australia. Hello, welcome Terry. Hi Beth from NIL, North Illinois. <laughs> Do you have anything for a dog with inflammation of the liver? I'll be right, I'll talk to you about that, absolutely. Uh, Melanie Beck from Kansas, Anne Marie, super fan Anne Marie, we love Anne Marie. Hello Anne Marie, Barbara, Susan again, hi guys. Happy to have you all here. Um, and I'm so excited to talk about this topic because oh, we've missed you too, Anne-Marie. I'm so happy to be back on here with you guys. Um, so yeah, we've got a lot to talk about. So let's get right to it. I wanna talk to you about how CBD can be used to help hotspots and then just generally how to take care of them and how to get rid of them, how to prevent them from happening. So first off, what I wanna talk about, oh, we got Angie there. We got Angie in the house. Angela Arlino is our uh, founder, the founder of CBD Dog Health. She is a holistic pet expert uh, and, a, and a cannabis pet expert. Uh, she has a fantastic podcast called It's a Dog's Life, where she's interviewing some of the most iconic people in the holistic pet world, veterinarians, for all these people who come to us and say, my vet can't talk to me about CBD. Well, both Angela and our, our chief veterinarian, Dr. Zach Pilosoff, they offer consultation on how to integrate CBD and cannabis medicine into your pet's regimen. Um, but uh, yeah, she's she's a really fantastic resource. So if you have questions, Angela Artelino, follow her on Facebook, on Instagram, and listen to her podcast, It's a Dog's Life on Cannabis Radio. And Jenny, see, Jenny loves, Jenny loves It's a Dog's Life. Um, Sandra Dean from Arizona. Oh my goodness, I was just in Arizona doing uh, a live tutorial at, uh, my goodness, Prescott Paws and Claws in Prescott, Arizona. 
Um, God, you guys, I could just sit here and chat with you all day, um, but we have we're talking about we're talking about hotspots. So um, let me get to that. All right, what is a hotspot? Well, let me tell you about it. Hotspots, by this definition, um, it's a red inflamed lesion caused by a bacterial infection of the skin. It's also known as pyotraumatic dermatitis or acute moist dermatitis. Basically, um, by a number of different routes, what can happen is there is a natural population of bacteria on our dog's skin, all on our skin. It lives there and under normal circumstances, it kind of has a symbiotic relationship with, uh, with the skin and with the body. But in certain cases, um, these populations can grow and be out of control. And when the immune system can't fight them off and defend against them, incidents where there are breaks in the skin, where um, something happens where there's an opening, that bacteria can get in there and start to cause this infection. So it really is just an infection of the skin um, that can become aggravated. Uh, so there, there are a lot of different reasons um, that can be the inciting event for this. Um, you know, oftentimes we see it's a behavioral thing. Uh, it's dogs that have a tendency to scratch and itch. It's a habitual thing. It can be caused by anxiety and stress, which is another reason that CBD can be helped, uh, can be used to help treating this kind of a condition or helping with this kind of condition. Um, you know, we want to make sure that our dogs are comfortable so that they're not hurting themselves, opening up the possibility that a wound can become infected and turn into a hot spot. Because, you know, if any of you have had hot spots on your dogs, if you have, comment below, tell me about it. You know that they can come out of nowhere and stick around for a long time because our dogs do not want to stop licking them, getting at them, and that's why they stick around. They, uh, they just can't heal. So next I would like to talk about a little bit about why it happens, what causes hot spots. Um, and here are some of the, here are the, some of the, the things that, that are the inciting forces that cause these hot spots. So like I said, usually it happens in the summertime. Summertime is a big hot spot season because our dogs are outside, they're playing, it's hot, it's moist, um, you know, they're, you know, it's easy for them to get scraped up, to be playing with other dogs, to get, get scratches on their skin. Um, and that in combination with the possibility of, uh, you know, just the, the tendency to, to have more bacterial growth in the summer. You know, we've got our dogs on, the, on Fire Flake Farm, our rescue farm in Tampa, for instance, we live right on a lake, it gets hot, it gets humid in the summer, We've got, you know, all the dogs on the farm, our rescues who are running in and out of the lake and then coming out and they stay moist. Their fur is soaked. They're rolling in the dirt. They're playing with each other. And if we don't make sure that they dry off, that their fur is clean, that their skin underneath the fur is clean, that's just a breeding ground for bacteria. And so, you know, that's why it's really important to, to make sure that your, your dog's skin is dry. Uh, you'll see also on this list that we've got here, dense fur, dogs with dense fur. That's why you see so many big dogs, uh, especially who, who are prone to hot spots because it's those dogs with super dense fur that the dirt, bacteria, moisture hangs on to that, hangs on to the fur and just creates the ideal conditions for bacteria to grow. You know, what, what do we know about bacteria? They love moisture, warmth. Um, so that's why that can happen so often. What are we saying over here? Emery says she loves It's a Dog's Life. Me too. Susan, you've got hot spots on your dog sometimes. Julia says, hello from Vermont. Mom of a pack of seven. Awesome. That's very cool. She says, we love all your products. Hubby and I use them too. Savs as well. The Savs are my favorite. That's what we're talking about today. And that's what we're giving away today. So don't leave. Stick around and uh, have a chance to get yourself a Soothe Salve. Um, so what was I saying? Bacteria. They love warm, moist, dense fur. Um, and so, you know, if we've got those, those things in combination, plus other factors like a weakened immune system, you know, the skin of our dogs, it has its own sort of unique immune system that 
is there basically to be the first sign of defense against different pathogens and outside forces coming to our dog's bodies. It's kind of like the outside wall of a castle. So if that immune system, if those defenses are compromised for any reason, you know, autoimmune diseases, um, poor, poor immune function because of things like diet, you know, different, different diets and, and allergens in the diet or environment, those defenses can kind of stand down and not be able to do their job fully. And so it makes our dogs more open and more prone to these kinds of infections to start breeding and, 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 um, and to create hotspots. So, oh, Itai says, I think that's what my dachshund has. Ah, yes. It's honestly, it's, it's hard to diagnose. And, and, you know, if, if you are confused, if you don't know, um, you know, there are cases where you can talk to, talk to a vet, do a, uh, consult, uh, like we offer with Dr. Zach and Angela to find out, um, really what this is. I'm not a veterinarian, so, you know, I can't diagnose or prescribe, but, um, there are some telltale signs that you can look for. Um, when you're looking for a hot spot, usually they are these red inflamed areas of skin. They weep, you know, they've got pus and discharge because of that infection. Um, that's why they're often called moist dermatitis because they look kind of gooey <laughs> for lack of a better word. They're, they're pretty gross. They, um, they hold a lot of moisture, um, and, are very uncomfortable for our dogs. You know, they don't, they don't feel good. They're super itchy. Um, and they stay there. Like I've been saying, they, they're really hard to get rid of on their own. It's something that we as pet parents need to be proactive about and need to help them, uh, to, to get rid of, um, some other things that I didn't mention on here, you know, our dogs that are prone to allergies, if the skin, um, if the skin is already prone to inflammation, to flare up because of different things in their diet, or because of things like fleas and bites, bites from other things, that can really create a, an opportunity where that inflammation just kind of sends the immune system of the skin into disarray. It can't defend itself. Uh, it's not communicating well and responding well to these threats. And so it, it is an opportunity for them to make their way in and to set up shop and start, you know, breeding their fam, their little bacteria family and creating these hot spots, these lesions. Um, Diana Bunch says, my sugar started a hot spot on her front leg for years when my dog Ruby crossed over. Oh, I wish I had known about this before I lost sugar last month. I surely would have tried it for her. I'm so sorry, Diana, that, um, that's such a shame. Um, when we know better, we do better. And now, you know, that's kind of our whole mentality is we, you know, there's no shame in, in being in the process of getting to be a better pet parent. I'm not perfect. None of us are on our team. We're learning and trying to do the best that we can and to spread awareness to other pet parents to do better as we, you know, take, more pets into our homes. So that's really the best you can do. You can't beat yourself up, up about that. Um, but that's exactly um, kind of what I'm talking about. It's oftentimes stress induced that makes our dogs bite, scratch, and start creating those abrasions that leave the skin open to infection. Karen has a question. On the site, it talks about ear infections. I'm wondering about colloidal silver, sea silver, and how to use it. Colloidal silver is fantastic. And that's actually something that we're gonna talk about today with hotspots. That's a really great option for a natural antimicrobial antibiotic that can help you disinfect these hotspots. Um, Susan says, I use Remedy on my dogs and myself works great, not for warts. Hmm, cool. Um, Karen also says, I love Ease and Soothe. Those are two of my favorite as well. I love the the uh, Manuka honey that's in us. It's fantastic for wound care. And today we're going to be giving away the Soothe Stuff. So before we move on to talk about uh, how CBD helps, um, I want to tell you about how we're going to give this stuff away. So we're going to be doing three different salves here. We're going to be giving away three Soothe Salves. Each of these have uh, a bunch of really great stuff in them. And all that we're asking is that you submit 
photos of your dog's hot spots or dermatitis or the area that you want to help with a Soothe staff. We're talking about hot spots today, but if you, you've got something that your dog could use this Soothe staff for, we're asking that you send in a picture of what it is. Send us a picture of that area on your dog's body that needs that soothing ginger, manuka honey, CBD to calm it down. And we'll send you, if you're one of the three people that we choose, we'll send you a uh, one of these soothes, which is worth 40 bucks. So it's a pretty great deal. Um, and then we just ask you that once you, once it works, that you send us a picture of the after. It just helps us get to more pet parents for them to see, hey, this stuff actually works. It's not just some guy on the internet telling me to, to buy a product. You know, um, we uh, our goal is to help as many pet parents as, as we possibly can, because we've seen it work with our rescues, with other pet parents that we've helped. So please submit your photos to support at cbddoghealth.com. And Sam is going to put that up there. There you are. Or on Facebook Messenger. Submit your photos and we're going to give away three of these today. So be one of those lucky winners. It's really awesome stuff. Honestly, well, I'm not supposed to say this, but I use it on myself. I really like it. It's great in the winter. So if I'm using it on myself, I'm definitely using it on my dogs. I really wouldn't give my dogs anything that I wouldn't use myself. It is made for pets, but it is all human grade. I'm not encouraging you to use this on yourself. This is a disclaimer. Um, do not use this on yourself. It's for dogs. Um, anyway, where was I? So I'm going to tell you a little bit about how CBD can help with, um, with hot spots. There are a number of properties of CBD and a full spectrum hemp extract, um, which are really great for something like this, for a wound, for an infection. Uh, the first one and kind of the most important uh, property of CBD, the thing that we know it best for, is its ability to reduce inflammation. So that's fantastic uh, for a number of reasons with something like a hot spot. It's going to reduce the inflammation that's causing itchiness, that's sending the local immune system into disarray, that's conf you know confusing its ability to fight back. It's going to um, stop it from you know basically getting worse. Another property of CBD and other um, compounds found in a full spectrum hemp extract, other cannabinoids like CBG or CBN, um, they're antimicrobial, antifungal, and antibacterial. So they help, they contribute to um, reducing this bacterial infection and stopping it from spreading further. Another thing that CBD is really great for, it's an analgesic. It has pain killing properties that can be affected locally. They, they work right at the spot where you put them on. And then finally, studies show that CBD contributes to accelerated wound healing. So it can actually help the skin to recover faster from abrasions, from wounds. And all of these, um, all of these properties that I've listed here, this is not just me saying it. Don't, don't take my word for it. If you look on our website, we've actually got a really great blog about hotspots, which Sam, if you're out there, if you could post our blog um, about hotspots, we have all the scientific sources where they have tested and studied these effects of CBD. And we, um, we have cited all of those sources directly on that blog under each heading for these properties. So that's one of the things that we're really passionate about. We want to give you guys reputable information that's backed up by science. We're not just telling you this is a cure all for everything. These are the ways it's going to work. Um, let's see. Oh my goodness. We've got more comments. My dogs just lick the soothe off my hands and the same with ease. I totally understand. It smells really good. Um, that's totally safe, by the way. There's nothing in there that they can't ingest. Soothe is totally safe to enjoy, ingest, but it, you, you definitely do want to let them keep it on their skin. It's important um, not only for this to be able to sink in. You know, I try and let it sink in for at least 20 minutes or so. I, I mean, the longer, the better. Some people would say less than that is fine. Um, but you really do want to stop them from licking it, especially with something like a hot spot, because that that is exactly the kind of aggravation that is going to just keep it going um, and keep the the skin from actually healing. Um, so oftentimes, what we recommend and what I'll talk about later when I go through a step by step how to deal with hot spots is um, you gotta sometimes wrap the wound. Put them in the in the cone of shame unfortunately as much as they hate it i get it i have fought dogs to put it on and they somehow miraculously always get it off 
Um, but you know, especially in the case of hotspots, you got to try and make sure they stay it on, keep it on. Um, Diana says, thank you for your kind words. She was sensitive and sweet girl. It's so hard to lose our pets. Um, and Marie says, I bought so much product because both my dogs were taking it, but our doodle passed in April. So the little dog is the only one on it now. We have bought every single product, including the horse CBD. We're so happy with everything. The have sell, salves help all spots. Thanks, Amory. I am so grateful that uh, your little dog's still doing well. I think your, your little dog's taking it for their seizures, right? I remember. Um, and what Amory's talking about here, she's using the horse, uh, horse products, which we have available. They're the same formulation as our other tinctures, just in higher potency and quantity. So a lot of people who are using a lot of CBD or have multiple dogs, it's a really good way to kind of like economize. Think of it like Costco size bottles of CBD for your dog. Same stuff. You're not going to overdose them. You just got to figure out how much um, to give them, basically. Karen says, it works. My doodles. It works. My doodles have had a tough summer and it's a game changer. Awesome, Karen. P definitely submit to, to get a, a, a free soothe. Um, to see support at cbddoghealth.com because we love to keep you in stock with this stuff and, and keep it helping them. Susan says, um, why not use it on ourselves as well as our dogs? I love how Remedy works on me. Had to put it on a bad dog bite, took care of it. Absolutely. I mean, yes, uh, yes, definitely, yes. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, does it burn on the raw places? This is a great question, Katie. Um, so one of the reasons I we recommend this, the Soothe Salve is because it has just really cooling, um, really soothing properties, obviously, by the name. We generally don't recommend the Remedy Salve for hot spots because of the other astringent um, the other astringent oils that are in there. So, you know, peppermint and eucalyptus that are in the remedy salve are probably not something that you want to put on a hot spot specifically, though they do have those antimicrobial properties, those antibacterial properties, even more. This, this salve is just going to help to really just reduce inflammation while still fighting that bacterial infection. The Manuka honey in there is fantastic for wound healing. So this is not, this does not burn an open wound. This is good. This is going to feel just fine for them. It's going to be really cooling. It's actually going to feel really great. Um, let's see. Susan says I've eight dogs, eight dogs. I'm using heal and ease CBD oil and remedy. Yay, Susan. All right. Sandra says, I put socks on my dogs, front paws, then I keep licking them after I put Remedy on. Great idea. That's exactly what we're talking about. Good thinking, Sandra. Okay, so moving on. Next, this is, oh, okay. Well, we've been talking about Soothe. Um, I'll, you know, this is this is what's in it. We can talk, I'll, I'll come back to this slide again, but basically here are all the different ingredients that are in the Soothe salve that we recommend for hot spots. Um, it's it's awesome. It's a coconut oil base. It's got manuka honey from New Zealand, which is a specific honey that is um, made from the tea tree plant. So it's got it's really fantastic uh, for for wound healing. Ginger essential oil that's super cooling. Arnica that's great for wound healing, and full spectrum hemp extract that's got a broad range of different cannabinoids that help with healing, anti inflammation, all sorts of great stuff. Um, love this stuff. Uh, and send in your photos to support at cbddoghealth.com. So this is what I really want to get to. This is our step-by-step -step how to treat hot spots, how to deal with hot spots. Um, I'm not a veterinarian. I do not offer medical advice. This is um, what our veterinary advisors tell us is kind of like the step-by-step -step process of how you can deal with your dog's hot spots that has worked really well for us on our rescue. Like I said, in Florida, where it is super humid, we got dogs in lakes that are coming out all different sizes um, that are prone to these kinds of hot spots and infections. So step one, you got to clean that area. And oftentimes, if we've got these dogs with thicker coats, you want to make sure you shave it down to the skin because if they've got all that fur, it's it's going to trap in moisture. It's going to trap in dirt and bacteria. So you really have to be cognizant of getting it right down to the skin. And then what you want to do is just make sure that you are cleaning it with a really a non-astringent soap, something really basic and organic in nature, um, and then disinfecting it. 
You know, you want to make sure that it is completely disinfected. Um, and so one thing that that Dr. For, for instance, Dr. Karen Becker, who's a really fantastic holistic and integrative vet, what she recommends for uh, disinfectant for all kinds of different wounds is povidone iodine. Uh, which is something that you can buy at CVS or any uh, local drugstore. And you basically take that iodine and you dilute it with water to the color of iced tea is what she recommends. So that's something you wash it and then you kind of dab on some povidone iodine and, um, and that will help disinfect it. And then you want to make sure that it's dry. Because like I was saying before, step two, make sure it's dry. Like I was saying before, um, it's the moisture and the warmth that is going to keep this from rep repairing and recovering from that infection. So wash, disinfect, dry. And then the next thing you're gonna wanna do is put some sort of a salve on it. So in this case, Soothe Salve. It's fantastic for this. All those things that I mentioned before, all these, all these incredible ingredients, they are fantastic for wound healing, for reducing inflammation, for reducing the itchiness that makes them want to re-aggravate it. Um, this is like, this is the best thing that you can put onto this hot spot afterwards to keep it, um, to keep it on the path to repair. And then next and the fourth step is you want to stop them. You got to stop them from, from getting at it. So whether that's the, the Elizabeth collar, um, the, the cone of shame as we call it, or with socks, you know, like, uh, who, who said that, who said that up here? Uh, Sandra, like Sandra said, putting socks on there on the, uh, uh, on the feet, that's a great idea, and it sounds really cute. I'm sure that they wouldn't appreciate it, but I love the when dogs walk with socks or booties on, like they've never walked before. It's like watching like a big man walk in heels for the first time. Um, yeah, so so yeah. Step four: make sure that they don't reaggravate it. This is really important because oftentimes, like we were talking about before, this is the incident that stems them to to have this aggravation in the, in the first place that anxiety the the habitual scratching and biting on these areas so make sure that they don't and then finally the last step is repeat this as often as you need to usually twice a day is good but anytime you see this wound start to weep again start to exude pus expel pus um that's a, that's a sign that you want to disinfect it again so that might be pretty often be very gentle with it, you know, always pat rather than rubbing. Um, that's going to be allow for the skin to really start repairing. Um, be gentle with it and repeat this process until um, until this area is repaired and, and healed. Um, another thing that that some of our, our vets advise is to you can mark the area around the thing so you can see whether it's growing or reducing in size and that'll kind of indicate whether you're on the right track to to getting it under control um let's see who else is have i missed i've missed some people here susan says now i need to get soothe as well it's awesome it's honestly it's i i really i love remedy but but soothe uh, soothe is really great diana says i need something for nose and paws hyperketosis, and also papillomas on my other babies. Would Soothe be a good choice? Um, for, for nose and paw hyperkeratosis, I actually would recommend our Nourish Salve. The Nourish Salve is really great for dry noses and paws. Um, it's super, uh, super rich and, and nourishing, obviously. It's called Nourish, and uh, that's really great. For papillomas, though, the, we, we recommend our Remedy Salve. Remedy salve for, for warts, papillomas, and tumors. Um, you know, all of these, all of our salves, Remedy, Soothe, and Nourish, they all contain 300 milligrams of full spectrum CBD. So, you know, if, you've, if Soothe is what you've got on hand, that's better than nothing. It's just that the different, the different um, medicinal herbs and plant medicines that we've included in these are formulated specifically for these different issues that each salve is targeting. So papillomas, remedy salve, hot spots, soothe. Make sure you send us your photos at support at cbddoghealth.com if you want to win a soothe. And for uh, noses and paws, dryness, uh, hyperkeratosis, I would go with the nourish salve. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a collector's item. Got to catch them all. <laughs> um, 
Uh, Sharon says, my eight month old golden has environmental allergies and just had his Nutriscan come back with a 21 out of 24 foods to avoid. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, Sharon, that that's a pain in the butt. That's going to be hard to find the foods that are that are going to be uh, great for him. I, I do I do want to say that, you know, those Nutriscans are great. Um, companies like Glacier Peak Holistics do, um, do a scan that'll tell you exactly what your pet is uh, sensitive to and what foods to avoid in their diet. But I will say also, these are not exact. They are not you know, th there's there's a little bit of room for interpretation in there. And you may also find that over time, those things can change. So if you, you know, definitely be switching out the protein, finding the right proteins and, and other foods that are going to be healthy for them. But, um, you know, your pet's immune system is going to change. So as you build it up, as you build its resilience, as you, you switch their diet, get them on more whole foods, um, more raw, freeze-dried, unprocessed foods, the gut and, and, and their immune system is going to get stronger, we hope, you know, hopefully, and be able to better defend against these things, become more resilient. Um, so definitely hang in there. Um, I think that, you know, you will you will be able to figure it out. And there are a lot of really fantastic resources, um, companies that we love to work with that I'm sure you know about, uh, Small Batch, Carnivore, we love Green Juju, Billy Hochman, who, who is their new nutritional science director and vice president. Um, yeah, if you and if you do want more advice on really great foods that can help, because um, that is a central piece of boosting the immune system and preventing conditions like hot spots. Um, there are some, for instance, Angela Ardolino, our founder, she has a, a document and a blog that has all of her recommendations, her favorite food brands. You can also follow Susan Thixton, who's a recent guest on our podcast. It's a dog's life. Um, they have a really, their, their conversation, Angela and Susan's is really fantastic. Um, and she has, she creates the list, um, truth about pet food, uh, her uh, the website is called Truth About F Pet Food, and every year she puts out a list of her recommended um, raw and natural pet foods, and uh, it's kind of like the Bible for for a lot of people. It's really fantastic. Uh, so yeah, God, I went on a tangent there, didn't I? Um, Susan, okay, yep, yep, that's a good antiseptic as well. Um, just whatever antiseptic you're using, you know, I, I never like to use alcohol or, or anything that is going to be astringent, that's going to burn. Um, and povidone iodine, what, what we recommended earlier is really great. And, um, it doesn't burn. It doesn't sting. Um, yes. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Katie says, yes. Should I wash raw spots with diluted iodine? Yes, ma'am. This is, this is what we recommend most because it's going to be great, great at disinfecting, but it's not going to be astringent. It's not going to burn. So uh, like I was saying before, Dr. Karen Becker, who's really fantastic, recommends that you dilute povidone iodine to about the color of iced tea and use that to disinfect these wounds. Um, that's going to be really great. Uh, would Soothe be great for itchy allergy ears? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, this, you know, with something like itchy allergy ears, Soothe is great, but Remedy actually might be a little bit better. Um, in this case where it's not, you know, an open lesion, the antimicrobial properties of eucalyptus and peppermint are going to be fantastic for killing off any kind of yeast or bacteria that's in there. You kind of want to follow a similar, similar strategy as with this hotspot as well in the cleaning process, you know, clean, disinfect with povidone iodine would be great. And then apply this salve that is going to kind of stay on there, continue to do the work, reduce inflammation, stimulate the immune system, um, and continue that antimicrobial property. Um, so, you know, Soothe is great for something like yeasty ears, allergy ears. I would actually go with the remedy probably. Um, let's see. Oh, Susan says, are you going to have any medicated shampoos later? Um, medicated shampoos? Well, I don't know. That's, uh, that's a good idea, Susan. Would you like to be on our formulation team? Would you like to join us? Um, <laughs> maybe we could uh, get some advice. I, you know, we, we kind of like to stay in our lane and, and do what we do. Um, there are some really great shampoo companies out there. Um, that if you'd like some advice, we'd be happy to, to give that to you. Um, if you want to DM us, private message us. Again, if you are just joining us 
Um, make sure that you submit your photos uh, of your dog's hot spots, dermatitis, bug bites, or anything, um, and uh, and we'll send you some soothe. And we just ask that you send us the before and after pictures so that we can use them to show other pet parents how this stuff works. It is the main thing that that allows people to have faith that you know we are really kind of up to what we say we are. Um, our goal is to help as many dogs as possible, and you guys are a big way that we do that. You know, I I just I want to say thank you for um, how much you guys you know support us and, and talk about what we're doing. It it really helps. Um, it, it really does. Uh, soothe and remedy for ruptured cysts as they heal. Absolutely. Yep. So remedy, oftentimes we're using the remedy on these cysts, those antimicrobial and antibacterial properties. When a cyst dies, explodes, it, um, it can be pretty gross. Um, and that's kind of natural. You know, we've had, we've had a lot of dogs with different lumps, bumps, and growths on our farm. Um, and as they go through the process of draining and, and kind of healing, it can be kind of gross. Obviously, same thing applies. We want to make sure that we um, disinfect them, make sure that they're clean, and then apply, um, apply these salves. Uh, if, if you have an open wound that's, that's super festering and, 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 and there's areas where clearly, clearly open um, that you're using remedy on, Keep using that remedy salve, but just try and avoid putting it right into the open wound if you can. Um, oftentimes you can kind of get around it uh, and just let it heal up a little bit in those super open places. But then otherwise the Soothe salve is really great for really sore and uh, like sore and moist looking lesions like hot spots. Um, Karen says, what do you feed your babies? I really like, um, I really like, here we go. Um, I really like Dr. Harvey's um, for my lifestyle and my budget. Um, you know, not all of us can can feed the the raw all the time. You know, I'm I'm on the go. I travel a lot, and Dr. Harvey's is a really great brand that kind of has all your nutritional values. And then you just add the protein and a little bit of fat, so that way I can switch between sardines, between freeze dried raw that I can bring with me in my backpack. Um, you know, add a raw egg to it. Um, uh, you know, go to my local store and pick up some some green juju, a little bit of um, you know some some really great vegetables and other antioxidants that are going to be really great um, for anti-cancerous properties and other things. So I love Dr. Harvey's, and then just kind of a variety of different proteins that I that I switch in and out depending on what they need and what they're sensitive to. Uh, Sharon Sharon says he's raw fed. That's great, awesome. We love raw feeding. Um, Susan McPherson says Glacier Peaks always comes back as no grains. The only reliable test that I've found is the skin test and not saliva. Okay. Interesting. That's really great to know. Karen says, love Billy. We love Billy too. Susan Thixton also love Karen. Thank you. Oh, Beth is gone. She's got a phone call. Beth is a busy woman. You guys, she's got, she's got places to go. She's got people to talk to. Um, Karen, uh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, I see. They've already healed. Happy to say. Oh my goodness, Beth, I'm so sorry. I did not answer your question on liver stuff. We've been uh, we've been running with the the hot spots topic. Um, I'm sorry. I don't remember what your question was. Um, and it's it's buried in there. Can you can you? To put it again, and I will promise that I will get to it. The other ones are to Susan McPherson says the other ones are to dehydrating CBD based shampoo would be wonderful. There are companies that do CBD based shampoos. It's just that CBD is pretty expensive, um, and to put it in a shampoo that's just going to wash off is I, I, I it's it, it makes me sad to see it all go down the drain. Um, but I hear what you're saying because it is fantastic for the hair follicles. It's great for the skin. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We really like Four Legger. Four Legger does a really great shampoo um, and Aroma Pause products. We really like too. Katie says after washing. Oh, this is good. Katie says after washing the raw places with diluted iodine, should I rinse with water one last time after leaving iodine on for a few minutes? I would say so. Yeah, you don't you don't really want to leave it on there necessarily. Just uh, make sure that you know you let it soak in. I think a few minutes is is a great way to do that. Um, and then rinse it off, of course. Uh, so yeah, 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 yeah. 
Um, Beth says, okay, let's, let's talk quickly about this liver thing. And then I'm just gonna talk briefly about how we can prevent hotspots from happening altogether since we've talked about what they are, what causes them, how CBD can help and how something like a Soothe Salve can be used in this regimen of treating them throughout time. Let's talk about a little bit about um, how to prevent them after this. So uh, she has inflammation of the liver, ALT enzyme is coming down with prednisone, but hate prednisone. Okay, so with CBD and the liver using an oral tincture, I do wanna preface this by saying I am not a veterinarian, you know, I, I've studied a lot. I was certified by the College of Integrative Veterinary Therapies in uh, cannabis medicine and veterinary medicine, uh, but I'm not a vet. So I can't give you medical advice on this stuff, but what I know and what I have been told by my veterinary advisors, I work closely with our veterinary network, is, um, is that CBD can be really great for the liver. And, um, you know, it can be very anti-inflammatory. It can be regenerative for the liver. However, it also gets processed by the liver. You know, it uh, the liver excretes the enzymes that are going to break CBD down. So um, you may see a rise in enzymes like ALP. CBD is not usually linked to rises in ALT, which is more of a marker of damage. A small rise in ALP is not necessarily a marker of damage to the liver. It's just a sign that the liver is, is working on something. So really any, any kind of medication, anything, um, any, any, even some, some foods and, and other herbal supplements are going to be processed by the liver. Um, so, you know, I would just, I would, I would definitely work on, use some CBD, probably something like our ease tincture. That's a lower dose. Start slow, work your way up. A great rule of thumb when working with a CBD tincture is always to start low and slowly increase your dosage over time. Um, and just check in if you can, if you're going to the vet on a regular basis and checking those liver enzymes, you know, just make sure that nothing goes totally wonky. A little bit of a rise, according to our advisors, is not something to panic about. Um, but there's also a lot of research that shows that it can be really fantastic for the liver. Uh, one that's published in the British Journal of Pharmacology in 2019 found that CBD was able to reverse hepatic damage um, and actually was was regenerative for the tissue in the liver. So it's kind of complicated. Um, it, it can be great, and it's also going to make the liver do a little bit of work. So you, it's it's a case by case thing. You're going to have to monitor your pet and see how it goes. But I would. Um, I would, I would try it. We have a lot of dogs who have liver disease who are using CBD successfully and they're having really positive results. Um, so that is what I would say about that. Take it with a grain of salt. You know your animal best. Use your resources. Uh, milk thistle, oh yeah. Oh yeah, Diana, milk thistle is great for the liver. Absolutely, definitely. There are some really fantastic companies who do Oh my God, who's, what do we use? Amber Naturals. Amber Naturals has a really great milk thistle, uh, which you can get at healing natu the healingnaturallystore.com. We sell uh, a milk thistle supplement that I take for my own self. Um, I can't tell you how many pet products I have in my medicine cabinet. It's, uh, they're really good. Oftentimes they go through they, it's, they're easier to get through the FDA so they're able to maintain their quality better. I have to be careful about recommending people try pet products because I don't want to get in trouble. So I'm not recommending that you use pet products on yourself. I, I am just a crazy person um, who does that. Uh, she has been on Denimarin. Denimarin, for everybody else who doesn't know, is uh, milk thistle. It's kind of a combination of different components of the milk thistle plant, which is Fantastic. Beth, I said the Ease tincture. So Ease is a tincture that we make at CBD Dog Health that also contains frankincense and turmeric. Um, and frankincense and turmeric are really great for, um, for the liver as well as the entire, um, the, the whole gut. Um, it's super anti-inflammatory. It's great for the immune system. And it's a lower dose than, than some of our other tinctures. Um, yeah, okay. So I've been talking for so long, so I'm gonna wrap this up with a little bit about how to prevent hot spots. That's what we came here to talk about, hot spots. So how to prevent them? You just take care of your pet's skin and coat. Um, make sure that they don't, you know, if they're gonna be in the lake, if it's gonna be hot, if it's gonna be wet, humid, just make sure that before the day is through, like once, they, once they've gotten wet, 
just make sure that you dry them off, that you wash them off. If they're dirty, make sure that that gets out of their coat. Um, and one way that you can do that is regular grooming, making sure that, you know, that their coat, if they're a thick coat dog, that that coat can be thinned out a little bit in the summer, you know, not too much. Oftentimes the coat being thick is what keeps our dogs cool in the summer, kind of counterintuitively. So we don't want to shave our dogs, but, um, you know, the grooming process keeps them clean, keeps them um, more managed, not, not matted. Matted fur is a big way that hot spots can develop. Um, here, yep, dry it when they're wet. The other thing, like we were talking about, the immune system is central. The, the, the health of our, our pet's immune system is so important to making sure that hot spots and other infections, other diseases don't develop. So feeding a fresh whole food, food diet that is species appropriate and in, in coordination with what you learn are your dog's natural sensitivities and, um, and, and the different ingredients and proteins that they thrive on, that really is going to boost their immune system and allow them to defend from infections like that, that cause things like, like hot spots, as well as a whole host of other diseases. So exactly that is what this next point says, reduce exposure to dietary and environmental allergens. So figure out what those proteins are that they're sensitive to. If they don't like chicken, if chicken makes them break out and, and, and uh, have areas of redness, avoid chicken. Um, cool proteins, you know, like sardines, oftentimes pork is really good. Um, rabbit, uh, those are really great cool proteins that we found are awesome. And then, in, and then aside from food stuff, make sure that in their environment, they're not exposed to allergens that are, that are going to uh, further exacerbate any kind of a, uh, a propensity to allergy. Uh, so, you know, get rid of all your, your chemical cleaning agents, Try to switch to organic and, and unfragranced um, cleaning cleaning products, shampoos. Um, stop using, you know, weed killers and stuff in the yard that are going to be. They've got their noses down there that they're going to be ingesting. I mean, don't don't use the flea and tick stuff. Again, not a veterinarian. Do what you need to do for your pet, but over overdoing the flea and tick stuff is terrible for them. If you're going to vaccinate your animals, um, you know, do it responsibly. Um, do it with a vet who knows what they're doing. Get tighter tests beyond that. Make sure that it's dosed correctly. Um, anyway, not a vet. I'm going off the rails here. Um, support the immune system. Oh, yeah. And finally, duh. What am I here for? I'm here to tell you that CBD is awesome. Um, and that CBD is another way that you can support their immune system, their skin, their coat naturally. Uh, that's going to help build a robust gut flora that is going to allow the immune system to thrive and defend against different pathogens and, and outside forces that can cause this kind of infection. Um, a tincture like our Ease tincture, which is designed to help against allergies and inflammation, again, with turmeric and frankincense, that's a really fantastic way um, for your allergy-prone dogs, dogs that are prone to yeast infections, that's a really great daily supplement to help build up their immune system uh, and allow them to thrive and um, kind of as a great pair to all of your other holistic modalities like their diet and, and different supplements that are helping them. Um, uh, what, do we, what do we got here? Emery says, uh-huh, uh-huh. Susan says, pork tenderloin, yeah. Venison, ground turkey breast, turkey's really good. Turkey very often is tolerated by most animals. Um, what do you recommend for flea and tick? Oh, Karen, that's a talk for another day. Karen, we don't have time to talk about all that. But I will tell you, um, actually, if you go on YouTube, I believe that we have a Facebook Live. If, you, if, you, if you've missed any of our Facebook Lives, all of them are on our YouTube page. We've got all our Facebook Lives on there. I'm pretty sure that we've done a, one of these, basically, about flea and tick. So you can go on there and check that out. If you go to AngelaArtolino.com, Angela has a really awesome natural flea and tick treatment program, um, national flea and tick protocol um, that has a bunch of different products, a bunch of different things that you can use uh, instead of the Brevecto or the whatever, you know, pesticide we're basically putting in our dog's bodies to kill off bugs that may bite them. Um, uh, yeah. So, so check that out. I think, yep, we've got, 
Sam, if you could post that flea and tick thing. There you go. See, she's already, she's way ahead of me. Sam is, Sam has got it. Um, so yeah, Susan says, I found a wonderful vinegar based floor cleaner Aunt Fanny's on Amazon. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Aunt Fanny's, I haven't heard of it, but vinegar is a great cleaner and uh, it is not bad. Branch Basics. Branch Basics has all natural cleaners. All right, cool. Uh, and Diana, with the truth of all truths, the more we can get back to natural products, the better for us and our pets. I couldn't agree more, Diana. Um, and uh, will this be available for replay? Absolutely. You can find it here on our um, on our Facebook page. And then also we will post it on our YouTube channel, which Sam has posted up there, a couple comments up. So you can watch it. Um, you know, you can invite your whole family over and you can put it on a big screen so you can just see me yammering on and going down rabbit holes anytime you want. <laughs> um, we're, uh, that's, that's pretty much it for me, I think. Um, Woo, thank you. <laughs> so thank you for joining us. And as a final reminder, we, we would love to give away some stuff. So again, this is our Soothe Salve. It is awesome. Look at all these great things in it. So if you want some Soothe Salve, we're gonna give away some of these today. It, uh, it is delicious. It, uh, it has all sorts of good stuff in it. I'll even put it on my face. Um, it, oh, and, and how you do that is you submit your photos of your dogs before to support at cbdoghealth.com. And then um, if you would, we're gonna send you this. And then if you would send us to how well it works, the photo of that afterwards, we would be so grateful. Thank you so much. Um, thank you guys. I'm really glad uh, that I got to do this with you today. Make sure you tune in next time. If you are subscribed to our email list, you will get a notification the next time we are doing this. Pay attention to those emails. Um, I love doing this. I'm so glad you all are out there. I hope you and your dogs are well. Have a wonderful weekend. Again, my name is Carter. I'm the director of education at CBD Dog Health. And that's it. Have a great weekend. Bye.